Hey everybody, this is Hollywood from the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling and you're listening to the Card Subject to Change podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good day. Bye. Well, sometimes love feels just right. It feels so real. It feels just like a power driver. Yeah. A power driver. That's what I'm talking about. So me personally, I'm actually a lifer. Uh, I don't right. remember a, a time that I wasn't watching professional wrestling. Uh, even my mom explains it to me as when, when I was a, a small child, you know, I would just stop in front of the TV and just sit and watch and I'd just be quiet. It just totally zoned in. So I uh, always, always been a wrestling fan. And as I get older and even learn more about the business, it's like I continue to fall in love with it for different reasons just it blows my mind and i'm like tugging on my mom's pants and stuff and i'm like mom mom and she's like yeah what and i go i want to do that and i'm like pointing at the tv well she looks and she goes oh you want to be like macho man and wear this cool sunglasses and say oh yeah and do the elbow drop and i go no i want to be the guy throwing snakes at people (laughs) (laughs) and now your hosts of the card subject to change podcast the four frequency sake tag team champions of the world, the Wizard CZ and Never Wrong Nick Gold. Hello, one and all. Welcome back to another exciting edition of the Card Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. I'm your host, Never Wrong Nick Bull. Of course, I'm joined by my tag team partner. The co-title holder of the Four Frequency Sake Network Tag Team Championship belts, the Wizard CZ. Wiz, how you doing? I'll be honest with you, partner. I am dragging today. I didn't sleep well. I'm a little tired. But uh, we had a fun night last night out at SCW Pro. And we, I'm excited to well, I'm excited right. to hype them up. And We absolutely did. Last night at SCW Pro in Bluegrass, they had their red, white, and bruised event. It was a great event. It was a hot night. Uh, we're currently in the sweltering, uh, the sweltering uh, wrath of a of, of a heat wave, if you will, trying to keep cool. But the action was hotter than all get out last night in bluegrass. And if you want to talk about heat, and I'm not talking about the heat in the air, uh, we have a guest today who, uh, for lack of a better term, I think it's nuclear heat when it comes to uh, an SCW Pro show. Um, I can't wait to tell him this face to face. When he comes out, I mean this in the best way possible. Oh no, he's here because he gets such nuclear heat. He gets such a response from the crowd. Um, I can't wait to hear what he had to say about it. And I can't wait to talk wrestling with him. Of course, I'm talking about our guest this week. He is the current holder of the quad city of the SCW pro QC cup. He is managed by none other than Mark storm. He is John Bonhart, and we have him in studio with us this week. John, I wanted to say this to you uh, uh, on the show. I wanted to wait to off the show. didn't want to say it off the air, but I get that feeling when you come out of the show. I mean this in the best way possible, not cutting you down. Oh, no, he's here again. He has such – you get you have such good heat around you as a wrestler, and I think I'm trying to pay it as a compliment to you that when you come out or when when your music hits or when you come out and have something to say – it's cringeworthy because you're going to get the crowd's reaction. And I think it's a good thing. Welcome to the show, John. Uh, happy to be here. And you know what? That is a, that is the best compliment you could possibly give, man. Um, you get heat like that. That means you got them. You know, that means they're, they're paying attention. All eyes are on me, you know, and that's, that's what you want as a performer. Add into that, that you have Mark you, storm. You got it. Corner. I don't know if you press the magic button yeah. before you come. <laughs> oh, go ahead, CZ. I was just saying, add into that that you've got Mark Storm in your corner, and it's uh, it's even hotter there. But we'll talk about Mark in a little bit. I do want to touch on on him being uh, being your guy in, in the corner. But I'm going to start off and ask you. I'm going to steal Nick's question. I did it last week too. Ask you the question we ask everybody that comes on the show for the first time: Why pro wrestling? What got you hooked? Uh, 
so initial fandom or like what made me decide this is what I want to do? Both. Or both. 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 Okay. Yeah, both. Yeah. All right, right on, right on. Uh, so as a kid growing up, um, we didn't have a whole lot of money, right? We had, uh, yeah, money was real, real scarce. But um, so obviously we didn't have cable, didn't have internet, didn't have all of that. But what we did have was those uh, those old dog ear antennas with the, with the, the tin foil wrapped around them so we could actually get a little bit of reception. Uh, and the only, only three channels that really came in, man, were two Spanish channels and at the time UPN, which SmackDown was on, uh, and those two Spanish channels, Lucha Libre was on. So I was exposed to it, uh, almost by necessity, I guess. Um, but I distinctly remember just every time it was on, it, it grabbed me, it grabbed me, it grabbed me. And the moment that it really like sunk in where I was like, okay there's something special about professional wrestling. This is something I want to, I want to watch on a regular basis. And I want to get to know, you know, what, what the magic is, so to speak. There was a moment in on SmackDown where they were really trying to get over a great colleagues, uh, his, his vice grip, right. Where he would grab his opponent by the head and he would yep. just squeeze the life out of him. Right. And I remember him, him applying the hold to, uh, to Rey Mysterio. And he's got him up in the air and his feet are dangling and he's, his arms are flailing and the crowd's losing their mind. They're, you know, this is their hero. They've loved this man for 15 plus years. You know, it's Rey Mysterio. And as he's going, just this little bit of blood spurts out of his mouth. And it's just dribbling down his chin and the, and the camera's right up on his face. And you just see this lifeless face, blood dribbling down. And they pan up to the great Kali and he's, you know, doing his whole thing. And I was like, Okay, obviously this man's brains didn't just get smashed. You know, I'm only I'm only you know six or seven at the time, but I I know yep. that we're not witnessing a murder. But everybody in this crowd, eyes laser focused on them. All of their attention is on this moment, and it's this huge spectacle. And I was like, okay, I'm hooked. I'll see y'all next week. We're 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 coming back. You got me. Um. And then, obviously, that was a great time to get in on SmackDown because you had The Undertaker. You had uh, Batista. You had Rey Mysterio. You had the Cruiserweight division. You had a pretty solid tag division at the time. You had Teddy Long, the best, in my opinion, the best general manager of all time. Play Such up, an entertaining play up, play oh, up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And you had, you had Taz on commentary with um, – I, I don't I don't remember who he was with at the time. It, but wasn't you, Michael, it wasn't Michael Cole yet, was it? Yeah, I don't think it was Michael Cole yet. I don't think at that point it was Michael Cole. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know eventually Michael Cole was there and eventually JBL was on as well. Uh, I think I was after Taz had left. But I don't recall who he was. It might have been like – it would have been before uh, Matthews. or And I don't think Grisham was doing any any commentary at the time. But the point was, we had Taz, and Taz was just phenomenal on his calls, man. He best announcer in the game at that point, in my opinion. Um, commentator at, the, at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that really sunk everything in from a from a spectacle point of view, right? And on the other end of that, I was also watching a lot of lucha libre, right? I was watching AAA, I was watching CMLL. And watching that fast-paced, super athletic style with the occasional, like, hardcore match that they would have, I was like, okay, so there is so much going on in the world of professional wrestling other than just the WWE. And it's it's not like, oh, they're just doing a carbon copy just in front of different people. No, this is an entirely different animal, you mm -hmm. know? And that was that was just, I had hooks stuck in from all these different angles at that point, you know? And then um, shortly after that, I got my buddy to start watching. And then we watched TNA and I started seeing some of those AAA guys and some of the guys I remember early on in SmackDown also being over there. And then, you know, some legends that you'd heard about, you know, your Mick Foley's, your Stings, your, your, these guys. And I was like, huh, okay, okay. And then it just kept sinking deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I went all the way down the rabbit hole. Did did the whole, you know, small town, nothing going on, bunch of kids who are wrestling fans. Yeah, we did a little backyard wrestling, you know. Um, <laughs> and it was just like, okay, so this is fun on top of that. It doesn't feel great, but it's fun, you know. Um, and then just 
after that, I had a couple of friends who went and got trained um, after they had, after we, you know, I think I was probably a sophomore in high school. They, they were out of high school at this point. They went and they got trained and um, their trainer got a, or got a hold of me. Cause I had, you know, I was with them every now and then when they would go to shows and things and it was like, you ever thought about doing this? I mean, you're, you're six foot four at the time I was in the, I was in football shape. So I was, I was looking pretty good. He's like, I think, I think you, I mean, you got to be able to look to you. You, you seem like you, you've got a passion for this, yada, yada, yada. Um, and we did like this little training camp thing in some guy's backyard, which is not the greatest venue. Um, but, uh, you know, we took a couple of bumps, we rolled around a little bit, ran the ropes a little bit, did that sort of a thing. And he was like, man, you, you move really well, you know, let's, let's get you doing this. But I was 16 at the time. There was no way mom was going to let that happen. Um, so it kind of got put on the back burner for a while. I stayed a fan, obviously. Um, but I was like, you know, maybe, maybe pro wrestling isn't, isn't going to be my thing. And then I get into college. My friends keep on, you know, they keep on working. They keep on working. Um, most of them kind of dropped out for this reason or another, you know, life happens. But, um, I always just kept coming back to this thought of like, you know, man, what if I did give it a go? You know, could I possibly make something out of this? Like, could could I do this and not just, I don't know. Could I break my neck? Of course. That's always an option. It's also an option that I have a 20-plus year career and it's the greatest thing I ever do with my life, you know? There's only one way to find out, to give it a shot. So, uh, 2020 comes around. I'm out of college at this point. Um... And one of my friends who had previously trained, who had dropped out, was like, you know, I'm thinking about getting back into it. Our other buddy that we'd known from from the backyard wrestling days, he was working at this school in San Jose, uh, Pro Wrestling Revolution. And he talked to their trainer, got got their rates probably a little lower than they normally would have been because he put in a word. And he was like, hey, man, if you guys start coming out and we'll get you trained, we can start getting you guys, you know, to the point where you're show ready, you know, yada, 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 the whole the whole pitch. And I was like, all right, I'm not, you know, I'm a single guy at this point. I've got no reason not to, you know. Um, so I start training there for a few months and it's going great. You know, I'm bumping feels real natural running the ropes feels real natural everything that we're doing is just flowing and it's like i everything's clicking i'm like okay 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 nothing was really overly difficult um granted we're doing like beginner beginner stuff and we're taking Mm -hmm. our sweet time hammering it all in sure but it just it all felt real good you know and i was like and i started getting into my mind like yeah yeah this is something i'm gonna go for this is something i'm gonna make a real run for uh well of course that's the beginning of 2020 two three months later country shuts down we're in yep. san jose bay area quarantine hits hard school shuts down obviously um so i'm kind of left high and dry and i'm like well now what um and then just some life things progress some life things progress i end up moving up to washington state and while I'm up there, I, the entire time I'm looking for a wrestling school because I'm like, as soon as as soon as this quarantine passes, as soon as all of this blows off, I'm getting back into wrestling. Like, there's there's no way at this point. It's it's in the blood. I got an itch for it. I'm doing yep. it. Um, start looking around for schools. Realize there's really nothing in the area as far as I could see. Um, so then I start broadening things out. I'm like, you know what? I'm making a decent amount of money. I know I can. I've got. I've got a skill set where I can pick up a job just about anywhere in the country and be all right. Um, I'm going to go wherever I can find a good school that I happen upon black and brave, of course. And uh, that's what kind of brought me out here, you know, and, and looking into it, I'm like, okay, well, there's a million and one schools that have a big name attached to it. Who's, you know, either a name on the building or is actually in the building all the time. Right. Let's look at kind of the other things that are attached to it. You know, let's see who's come through the school. Are they attached to a promotion? What's the facilities look like? You know, that whole checklist. And man, Black and Brave just checked every single box. So, you know, I uh, got the money together, paid everything off, put my application in, got accepted. Um, 
drove my way out here. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another, went through training. Um, and here we are. Very interesting how you ended up in the Midwest, uh, you know, post COVID. That's very, very interesting. You said, you said something there, uh, when you were telling your, 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 what got you into wrestling, uh, you know, watching Lucha Libre, you, you, you obviously, I don't know if you speak Spanish, maybe you do. Um, uh, very, very little. What's sitting there at little. that age, being able to watch something and not caring about at the age of six or seven and not mm -hmm. caring about what you hear. It's just a, it's just a different way of watching things. I think oh, yeah. I, thought that, I thought that was unique. Um, what, what, where, where is your, where are you mentally when you come here and get ready for day one? Because a lot of, or day zero, a lot of people talk about how hard that first day is at black and brave. And, and you probably were, <laughs> you are in good shape. You're ready for school. He, he chuckles, he chuckles, but we've heard horror stories. I guess we're no, asking exactly. you to tell us your horror story. <laughs> uh, so my horror story is pretty unique. Um, I didn't know that day zero was a thing. I got out here uh, about two, three days beforehand. I was told, oh, hey, and by the way, there's this, there's this big conditioning test that you have to go through, and it's absolutely awful. Um, and, like, you got to get, like, a physical and all these other things in order to, to actually do it. And I had no idea. None whatsoever. Um, so I'm, I had to scramble to get a physical done. I literally got a physical done at 7 a.m. the morning of our conditioning test. Um, and I'm, I'm stressing because I'm like, are we going to get this done in time? Like, are we going to go, is everything going to be good? Am I going to have to wait for other people to go through this clinic? I had no idea. I just showed up as soon as doors open and tried to get in to get a physical done. Luckily, I got in, got out real quick. None of that was a problem. Um, but I was totally caught on unawares. <laughs> by the conditioning test. And then when it hit, man, that thing hit like a freight train. <laughs> it was physically the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, you know, not all, you know, not a whole lot comes close. The closest thing and it's not, and it's miles away uh, would be like, uh, like hell week in football when you're doing two a days and it's a hundred yep. plus degrees. Yep. That's the closest I can possibly think. Okay. But it's like, if you take that the whole week and you condense it into three and a half, four hours, and then you make it 10 times harder because it's CrossFit, you know, it's designed to just absolutely empty your gas tank. Um, yeah, it was, it was real. It was rough. It was incredibly rough. I remember distinctly that night, every single person in the house lights out by like 8 p.m. We were done. <laughs> you know? uh, Might have been the best sleep I ever got in my entire life. Oh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. This is the Card Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. We are powered by Lil Pice Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan and Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zook of Country Financial. We are speaking with SCW Pro's uh, QC Cup holder, the one and only John Bonhart, kind of giving us his origin story of how he got uh, here in the Midwest to train at Black and Brave and that first day of Black and Brave. Talk about how much you have changed mentally since you enrolled the wrestling school. You had that love and passion when you got here in the Midwest. You hit wrestling school. You hit that conditioning test. Talk about how much... I mean, mentally, it changed you, informed you to where you are right now. Um, I think one of the things that really hit home for me during that was I was in great shape. I can push through just about anything. Yep. Um, it's going to suck, but I can get there. But I need to understand that there is going to be people who athletically are just untouchable as far as – as far as where I'm at and where I can be, there's just yep. physical freaks out there, you know, just absolute specimens. Um, and as hard as I try, as long as they keep on going the way they're going, I just, I ain't going to catch up and that's okay. That's okay. You know, not everybody needs to be, uh, you know, a Greek Adonis. Not everybody has to be the most physically fit human being on the planet. You know, that's, that's a big part of what we're doing, but it's not, it's not everything, you know, um, specifically, I had uh, I had Maggie Lee in my class while we were doing our conditioning uh -huh. test. Yep, and I mean, if you've ever seen that woman work, she is a she is a 
a physical specimen. She is ridiculous. Her her cardio is unlike anything I've ever seen. You mm-hmm. know, it was absurd. I don't even know if that woman got winded during the conditioning test. Sure. <laughs> it was absurd. Um, so that really kind of uh, added an extra layer of humility, I think. I hope. Um, I think that was there. It was that, and then it was it was just the fact that I knew that if I just gritted my teeth, I can get through just about anything. So talk about how talk about the evolution of John Bonhart, how you started, and, and how you got to where you are now with your with your character work, with your in ring work. So character work, I kind of started out with this idea of like, I grew up listening to a lot of bands like Godsmack, Pantera. Yep. Um, you know, uh, I was a big Dimebag Daryl fan, big Phil Anselmo fan, a uh, big Sully Erna fan. I was a big David Draymond fan. Um, and I'm from a, a rodeo town. I'm from a, a, a very ag town. The, the tagline of the city is the cowboy capital of the world, Oakdale, California. Okay. So I was like, well, what if I combine all these elements together and just tried to make some kind of it, throw myself in that puddle and just make some kind of weird Frankenstein that just vibes with me that works. Yeah. Um, and it's been a challenge, you know, it really, really has been kind of trying to find my footing, trying to find my own identity. And it's something I'm still working with. You know, a lot of the times, honestly, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. You know, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I go out there and I have a general idea, but at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of just a mindset and whatever in the moment feels right. Character wise is what I do, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I try to do kind of like a like a method acting kind of a thing where I put myself as much as possible into any whatever I'm doing, and that's how I become John Bonhart, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. You do you there is a look you make sometimes in the way that you've got your head shaved that you do kind of resemble Phil Anselmo at times. So I would take that as a compliment. Oh hell yeah. No, I absolutely <laughs> will. Um, I actually just posed this question to my girlfriend last night. I was like, how do I become more Phil Anselmo and less Aaron Lewis. And I'm thinking to myself, like, does that make sense to anybody else? Maybe not. But up here, like, I get it, you know? Anger? Like, anger, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's a maybe little more something with my look, you know? Maybe I don't know. That's a, good, that's a good question. A little bit. Yeah, that's it's, a good it's question. Just, I think it's something that I'm going to have kind of, like, hanging over on a lot of my future uh, choices, you know? It's like... Uh, how do I go more towards this Pantera kind of a thing and less towards a stained kind of a thing? You know, if that makes any sense. That's a great way to put it. No, I totally, I totally okay. get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. That's a good way to put right, it. Right on. Uh, I don't know more. I don't know if you can be any more angry than what you what you are as as John Bonhart. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Phil like, Selma always carried around this anger with him. So yeah, but like so did so did Eric Lewis, but it was a different yep. kind of an anger. It's like how yes. do I? Yes. How do I channel one over the other, you know? And I don't necessarily need to not channel one at all. It's just how do I channel the one I want to channel more in, in the right moments, if that makes any you, sense. You got to get that deep fill in some old voice and, and, and yeah, get that yeah, growl yeah. maybe. If people, I don't know. I don't know. That's a great question. That's that's a funny way to look at it. I want to be more fill in some than Aaron Lewis. But, no, you're right. That's that's a cool way to look at it for sure. Um. We're talking here with John Bonhart on the Card Subject to Change podcast, podcast by the fan for the fan. He is the current QC cup holder for SCW Pro Wrestling. And we're talking about how he got here to the Midwest, his mindsets uh, from getting through the wrestling school and developing his character. Let's talk about when you get out of wrestling school. And uh, I think, you know, maybe it's a, I don't know if it's a fear, but it's a worry maybe of wrestlers when they get out of wrestling school. It's getting booked. It's going somewhere and getting booked and being seen and getting repetitions, getting matches places. Did you worry about that? Or was that, was that an easy thing for you to get, to get booked? Uh, so I was lucky and it didn't take me too, too long. I graduated at the end of July of uh, 2022, I believe. And I had my first match okay. September of 2022. So it wasn't, okay. it wasn't a whole, whole lot of a wait. But there was definitely that that anticipation because I did see other people who were in my class started to get booked before me. 
And I was like, I know it's only a matter of time. I know I'm doing all the right steps. I'm, I'm getting in cars. I'm going to shows. I'm helping out. I'm getting in front of promoters. I'm conducting myself professionally. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working on a look. I'm, I'm working on, you know, getting, getting gear, getting all of these kinds of things. Yep. Uh, but I knew it would just, it would come eventually, you know? So I don't think there was a whole lot of anxiety on my end. Um, definitely not a fear. Okay. Um, I think my biggest anxiety or fear would be that like I would get booked somewhere and it would just be kind of that kind of to be a laughing stock. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, which that's mm-hmm. like the fool. That's the worst fear you could possibly have because honestly being a laughing stock is one of the funnest things to do as a professional wrestler, you know, like, um, getting a little bit of egg in your face. Yep. It's part and parcel with the business, you know, it's, it's part of the entertainment of all of it. Yep. You know, speaking of uh, speaking of getting a little egg on your face, I want to go back a few months. You had uh, you had a great rivalry with with Crotch over the QC Cup. Uh, talk about talk about his twentieth anniversary, and <laughs> you know you know where I, I'm I going. Knew, I knew where you're going. The second you said, <laughs> speaking of getting egg on your face, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Talk about, Talk about that match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there was so much purple frosting on that cake. It was such a pain to clean myself up after that. Um, I am still furious at, at Matt Mayday crotch for that one. Um, no, it's water under the bridge um but i've watched that back and seen the pictures and i'm just i'm just thinking like that's one of those moments i'm gonna remember at the very end of my career and many many years afterwards as being a part of that moment and it's like obviously there is the big moment of hitting the cake and all of that but on top of that it's i got to be the guy who was in the 20th anniversary match for my trainer you know how many people get to say that and i got to do that just barely a year after after starting right wild absolutely crazy um and i remember just just getting to the back with all of that frosting on and everybody just going because <laughs> nobody had any idea there was that much on there i mean i think i had a glob on my forehead about yay big you know just a big right there like a cupcake sized glob of frosting um <laughs> Yeah, getting getting that out of my gear was 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 quite the challenge. Um, thankfully, alcohol wipes are, are plentiful backstage. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot about SCW wanna... Pro. We talked about SCW Pro, and you're the current you're the current uh, QC Cup holder. Let's talk about some other places maybe that you've worked besides SCW Pro. Um, in your in your wrestling you know your, your your short wrestling career so far just in it two years but you've got plenty of plenty of uh exposure and, and experience so far um well I'll first and foremost hit iron spirit they've been um they've been one of my most consistent promotions since uh really six months in uh it was my first time working for them it was february of the year after i graduated um, and they have they have been really 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 consistent with bringing me onto their shows, and I've had some of my absolute favorite matches with them. Mm-hmm. Um, they've always been big supporters of me, um, and will be. Uh, I'll be there on July twentieth at the Station Saloon. Yep. Um, hopefully, hopefully as many of your listeners as possible come out to that. Uh, that that's going to be their biggest show of the year, um, and I'm I'm super excited to be a part of it. I was a part of it last year, and it was. It, it was it was a very special show. We had um, Logan on uh, the other <laughs> night from Iron Spirit Pro and was getting us uh, geeked up and excited for that show. And and your name came up there and that you had worked there for Iron Spirit Pro. So I wanted you to – I'm glad you mentioned them and, and gave them a little rub here on the show. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and like I said, they've been one of my absolute – they've been huge supporters of me. And working for that company has been an absolute joy. Um some of the other companies that I've worked with, uh, I've worked with Janesville Wrestling Alliance, JWA up in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. Yep. Uh, shout out to Andy Church and, and everything he's got going on up there. They've also been huge supporters of me since since virtually day one. Um, 
shout out to uh, to Trailblazer in Kansas City. Uh, they gave me my first match once upon a time out in uh, Olathe, Kansas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, big shout out to MCW, um, who will also be running on July 20th. I will not be there, but uh, they'll be concluding their U.S. title tournament there. Um, or, no, not concluding. They'll have the semifinals. Semifinals. Okay. Um, should be an absolutely phenomenal show. Um Doug Basham is going to be involved in some way, shape, or form. He'll be doing a seminar before the show um, to to any pros who are out there who might be interested in something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they also run a, a very very tight ship. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of workers are are a part of the backstage there, um, putting together shows, putting together production values, you know, uh, promoting all of that. So a lot of that is very. Um, wrestler run which is which is very very nice they they mm-hmm. really take care of everybody um i want to put a, a shout out to fourth wall wrestling up in uh milwaukee um they've they've recently been giving me a couple of a couple of good looks um and they're an absolutely phenomenal company to work for um i want to give a shout out to uh aaw alive they've um which is like the the pre-show to aaw's main show um Danny Daniels, who trained all of my trainers, uh, you know, and all like probably a third of the SCW Hall of Famers, maybe more. Yep. Um, I recently got an AEW Alive there um, after, you know, working my tail off for him to try to get on. Um, they finally kind of decided, you know, hey, we'll, we'll give you a look. Um, and it was, I felt it was a really good time, really good match. I, I was very happy with it. I think they were really happy with it. Uh, hopefully I get to work with them again going forward. Um, and I am Excellent. positive I'm, I'm missing some, uh, WrestleMax, WrestleMax out in, uh, Columbia, Illinois, uh, just over the state line from, uh, from St. Louis, mm-hmm. phenomenal mm-hmm. company. They had given me a couple of really good looks. Uh, they were the first people that got me on IWTV, which is, that was, that was really cool. That was a little, little bucket list moment right there. Sure. Um, and it's, I, I really like trying to get out to as many different places as possible. Um, to try and get, uh, you know, get exposure to different styles, exposure to different ways of doing things, different ways of doing uh, everything backstage from production, booking, music, sound, everything. Um, and uh, also uh, THT, the hottest topic out in Ames, Ames, Iowa. Um, they'll be putting on, I believe this will be their third show coming up in August, um, but not the exact date, I believe it's the 18th. Uh, okay. two seconds i'm gonna check on that uh but they are run by also two two wrestlers uh jj garrett and jeff maddox out of nebraska uh mm-hmm. and they are an absolutely phenomenal group of people to work with put on absolutely great shows uh and they put a hundred percent of their stock in in the people on their shows and that just means the absolute world to us you know yep uh, and I apologize to anybody I may have forgotten on there. Uh, <laughs> no. I hope I hit everybody. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I hit everybody. <laughs> but uh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I, I try to get out there as much as possible. I've always, I've always been told, and always been of the mindset that that's how you grow. That's how you get better. That's how you become a good professional wrestler. That's how you get to where you want to go. Sure. Um, sure. So I've tried to do that as much as physically possible. Um, from day one, really. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we are talking with John Bonhart on the card subject to change podcast, the podcast by the fans for the fans. We're going to take a, take a moment to have a quick timeout, pay some dues to our, uh, to our network shows and our sponsors. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with more with John Bonhart. And of course, our weekly moment of focus with the feline phenom. Be right back. Football season may be over, but for frequency's sake, still has you covered for all your sporting needs. Tune in every Sunday when the best professional wrestling podcast around, Cards Subject to Change, gets you caught up on everything inside the ropes. They won't miss a count with weekly analysis and interviews. More into auto racing? We've got a double dose for you on the track. Tune in to Fast Money with Rod Villagomez each week and win some money with the quickest bets in all of sports. Want more insight from Pit Row? Check out the Green, White, and Checkered podcast where they give 
give their insight on everything happening on and off the track. Need your basketball fix? Points in the Paint has you covered with live shows every other week looking at everything in the association. Backed by popular demand, we have the return of The Payoff Pitch, FFSQC's baseball show, covering you on news around the MLB. If you're missing football, don't fret. Mark and Dan still have you covered in the football lounge. Missing Joe Winkle? Probably not, but he's still here talking sports on educated ignorance. Football season might be over, but we've still got you covered. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. For frequency's sake is brought to you by Durham Remodeling, serving the Quad City area's remodeling and repair needs since 1973. Clint's Draft House, grab a bite and a pint. 7th Street Moline. Low Pies, New York-style pizza served up by the Slice or Pie, Davenport. Lifted Energy, energy drinks, coffee, donuts, and more. Hashtag get lifted. Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles. Sports cards and memorabilia, vintage clothing, hats, pennants, and more. Ryan Allison Tattoo. Step into the vibrant world of tattoos with Ryan Allison. And a cut above. Offering quality custom woodwork designed specifically around our customers. Hey everyone, we are checking out at Walmart. We've got ourselves four full carts. We are got plenty of toys here. We're gonna see what our final number is here in a couple of minutes. But well, we've got a couple of nice folks here checking us out. But hopefully we'll got plenty of stuff for everybody to get uh, everybody a nice happy Christmas this year. Football season is just around the corner, and once again, for fantasy sake, is running its annual Toys for Tots Fantasy Football Leagues. Don't miss your chance to be crowned the best fantasy football player in the Quad Cities and help raise money for Toys for Tots of the Quad Cities. The For Fantasy Sake Toys for Tots Bowl is loaded with great prizes and even better local celebrity participants, ranging from professional athletes and news personalities, and even former Iowa Hawkeye fullback, SCW Pro and Pro Wrestling Trailblazer, Steve Manders. To sign up, just visit For Frequency Sake on Facebook or Twitter and follow the links. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to Card <laughs> Subject to Change. We are the podcast by the fan for the fan, powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zook of Country Financial. Uh, we're here with John Bonhart, but before we get back to John, uh, we have uh, we have our moment of focus here with the feline phenom, feline phenom. He's going to give me so much crap over that. J- he here's should. JT Energy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Welcome, friends. Welcome to a moment of focus with the feline phenom, JT Energy. And every week when I come in here, you're like, He doesn't look like a feline phenom. Well, guess what? The feline phenom is here today. I'm here. And what are we focusing on? What are we focusing on? You know what you should focus on? Getting the job done. Whatever your task is at hand, get it done. No excuses. If something does happen, it's your fault. If something doesn't happen, it's also your fault. This has been the feline phenom. JT Energy, you're welcome. A more Nick, assertive if... approach. Yes. I couldn't tell if he was angry or focused, but I will say, unfortunately, he did not get the job done last night. He must have recorded that just before he got his head kicked off by Shane Hollister in the main event. Yeah. Yeah, uh, JT looked a little woozy after that six-man scramble man event last night at Red, White, and Bruised. Uh, hopefully, he's okay. But yeah, he he did not get the job done. We hope that um, he's okay, and then he's back with us ne- next week for another moment of focus. Did you notice that he looked over at us last night, CZ, as he entered the ring and said "focus" to us? Uh, I I I, 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 I hope did. his focus wasn't on us, and I I hope it was on the match. But he definitely. Uh, it was making sure that we were focused uh, on last night's match. He was, he really was. And I'm, I'm glad cause we like to stay focused. And speaking of focusing, we got to focus back on our guest, Mr. John Bonhart. Uh, John, I want to ask you, we're talking about SCW pro again. We've, we've gone back to the beginning of the podcast here in the middle. Uh, you have been paired over the last several months with uh 
brilliant manager uh, who many people do not like. Uh, I've known Mr. Mark Storm for quite a while. Uh, he is a very angry man, and he yelled at me one t one night when he couldn't find the cup that you so uh, so gallantly carry to the ring every every show. Talk about your partnership with Mark and how that has helped you evolve. Uh, it's it's kind of just a perfect fit, you know. Um, he brings to the table everything I need. You know, he's got all the experience. He he knows he knows how to how to handle people. He knows how to keep me focused. Uh, he knows how to how to get me what I want. Um, and he's always got my back. You can't ask for anything more in a manager, you know. Uh, and, and sometimes, for, and sometimes, in, sometimes he may have your back a little too much, right? Or maybe that's maybe that's what his duties are 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 for. Nah, I think he's got my back just the perfect amount. <laughs> maybe he needs to have my back a little bit more sometimes. No. <laughs> yeah. Mark Storm being called out on card subject to change. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. And where was my cup, huh? Where was my cup, CZ? Uh, I didn't have it. It was nowhere mm -hmm. near me. I did not see where it ended up. Mm-hmm. But no I would never. You were you were recently gifted a newer version of the QC Cup, um, a kind of bigger, so. a bigger, shinier, uh, more gold version of, of the QC Cup. Uh, what, what was that like getting the new QC Cup and being able to uh, to still carry that? Uh, well, for starters, it felt right. Um, you've got your biggest, best champion yet, so of course you give him the biggest and the best cup you can possibly get him. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, now the other the old cup was was getting real banged up. Uh, it had definitely been through its paces. Uh, I think it's probably older than half of our audience at that point. Um, <laughs> at the point that we retired it, so it, it was it was due. You know, it, it was really due. Um, and the moment of me receiving that cup was another one of those moments that, like, it was it was a really great little, uh, little not necessarily a culmination of the story, but a natural progression. Um, yeah, and it—I uh, think it really symbolized where we want to go with it. So uh, that was that was one of my favorite moments so far of the run. I was there the night you got the new cup, and you—you you seemed to be pretty thrilled about it. And you're right; it did it did culminate a moment. So it was it was a, it was a pretty cool moment when that did happen. Oh yeah, and it is one more time just an absolutely beautiful cup, absolutely yep. beautiful. So. I want to go, uh, We, as we often do, uh, we do a little fantasy booking every once in a while with our guests. Uh, just going to throw this out there. Is there a dream opponent, or maybe more than one, whether they are from the past, from the present, or that you see up and coming that you would like to get in the ring with? Uh, and we're talking <clears throat> professional wrestling as a whole, or are we strictly yes. SCW? Okay. Yeah. Professional uh, wrestling as a whole, no limit. Professional wrestling as a whole, uh, there is a man named Rafael Quintero. Um, he came up through uh, CSW, Chicago Style Wrestling, at around the same time I started trying to get out and get to as many different promotions as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I have seen that man just strap a rocket to his own back and send himself to the moon. Uh, and he is one of the hottest pro wrestlers coming out of Chicago in a long time and I would absolutely love to have a match with him someday uh, on any promotion any show any day of the week uh, I would absolutely love to get in there with him um, I would also absolutely love to to have a singles match with Shane Boucher um, we've we've been a part of some some multi-man matches some tag matches but never a one-on-one -on -one match and um uh, I think he and I could really, really do something together. Um, now, if we're going way out there, things that could never possibly happen, I would absolutely love to have a match with like a guy like Kenta. Um, one of the guys who, growing up, I watched a ton of his stuff and was just in, enthralled with what he was doing. You know, um, I grew up watching... SmackDown, the WWE style, watching Lucha Libre, that whole style, the pageantry, the athleticism, all of that. Yep. Um, and then around my teen years, I started really getting into like 
the the early 2000s independent scene where it was a lot of people who were starting to try to see who were starting to see the pure riso style start to see a lot of that japanese stuff come in so naturally i went from that to then watching some of that japanese stuff that that late 90s noah the early 2000s noah the early 90s AJP, ajpw and was just absolutely enthralled with just the brutality the fighting spirit the the respect of everybody involved the the performers for each other the fans for the performers the the performers for the fans the promoters for everybody involved the media the the nation as a whole all of that and right at the forefront of all of that for me anyway was kenta you know he really helped bring a lot of that over and he's still to this day one of the best in the world you know and this is 20 plus years later Yep. Um, so that would be an absolute, absolute dream match. Um, and you know, there's, I could go on and on and on on this. I could, I could cover the rest of our podcast with it if we want to. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll cut myself off right there. I don't know how much of the current product you watch or or what catches your eye, but what what of today's stuff do you go out of your way to watch or uh, make sure you don't miss uh, when it's on. You know, what, what are you watching of, of current day product? Um, I watch a lot of independent stuff. Uh, I watch a lot of West Coast Pro, Prestige, Beyond, uh, Wrestle Open, Action One, uh, Dreamwave, AW, uh, Glory Pro, uh, Defy, uh, a little bit of a little bit of the Japanese stuff still. It's a little harder to come by, but like I watch a lot of Noah still. Uh, mm-hmm. When I can, I'll catch some New Japan stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of DDT as well. Um, you know, it's it, I swear the the best in the world always seems to pop out of DDT. Just every ten years, they're just like, "Hey guys, here's this guy you've never heard of. He just happens to be, you know, the the, the second coming of uh, Bruno San Martino or whatever." Right. Um, so I like to keep an eye on over there. <laughs> Uh, I don't really watch nearly as much uh, Lucha stuff as I would like to. Uh, but I think part of that comes with the fact that I see a lot of Lucha stuff while I'm out there. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the shows I'm on, you've got a lot of luchadors on. Um, and there, there's a lot of Lucha guys that are fig- figured that are very prominent in a lot of uh, top indie places today. So I, I kind of get my, my Lucha fill through that. Uh, so I'm not necessarily watching a lot of CMLL or AAA. Um, and then I'll also kind of, kind of go back and watch like Lucha Underground, even though that's kind of like a, like a, that's no longer really a, a, a present product, but well, I'll there, still go back and watch, watch that. There are some and, hidden gems. There are some hidden gems mm-hmm. there. There's a lot of good people, uh, that oh, works, so that works for that company. So many mm-hmm. now that are exploded, but yep. you're right. That might be, that's something that I think that would be beneficial to any fan listening that likes wrestling. If you want to go back and find some stuff and be like, Oh, Oh, he could do that. Aztec oh, Underground. Do match together? Aztec oh, Underground. Yep. 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 There's Aztec a lot underground of with the MLW. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, man. It's been years. I mean, a few years since I've sat down and watched an episode, but I need to go back and do I need to go back and do that because there there's some there's some hidden gems on that show. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Oh yeah. Um, first one that pops off to my mind is uh, Grave Consequences, man. Grave consequences. Mil Muertes, Ray Phoenix. Yep. Oh man, you you don't get a better casket match than that. You just don't. I mean, and, and I, you know, I know him as John Morrison, but John Morrison did some great stuff there. Oh yeah. Uh, Ricochet, who was under a mask as Prince Puma, mm-hmm. uh, was Aztec Underground. There's a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting uh, characters that were there, and they, and. You know, the storylines might have been a little far-fetched out there, but I liked what they were doing. It was different. Yeah. It was, yeah you know, it was, different. It, it was fun. The backstage was stuff was kind of like a crime great. drama. Yeah. Right? It, was like a, <laughs> it was shot like old, like telenovelas that you'll see on like Telemundo. It was great. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> like everything from from the cinematography to, to the close-ups on the faces, to the way the dialogue was presented, to the gravity of every situation. Yeah, sometimes you'd have the background music. It was oh, it was great. the lighting, everything. I loved the production of it. It was the production was was the production was different because we really hadn't seen anything like it up mm-hmm. until then. And I oh, think yeah. that's why it, it gained so much popularity. The fans like people are like, "Wow, wrestling can be done this way. This is cool." Yep. 
Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. So, John, I've got to talk a little bit. I almost got in an altercation last night because you almost were poached from your first podcast appearance here on the Card Subject Exchange by a fellow podcaster who uh, I will just go ahead and name. His name is Rob Kammerer. Uh, I know you talked with him uh, <laughs> earlier this weekend. Uh, he tried to steal you and get you out there first instead of us, but uh, but I was able to persuade him uh, otherwise. So that uh, we're excited to hear your interview with him in the next few days. I got to ask you, uh, he always talks about his hot tub full of pizza rolls. Did you get invited into the hot tub full of pizza rolls during your interview? No, and now I feel incredibly slighted, and I think it might be I, – I think I think you might be partially responsible for me not getting an invite. Oh, I, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Because oh. he did bring oh. up that you two had talked. So I, I, maybe I'm connecting some dots where there ain't no connection, but <laughs> – Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. That's right. That's oh. right. That's right. Oh. Mm. <laughs> And we definitely want to plug our friend Rob Cameron at the MLW Confusion podcast. Of course, he's going to have John Bonhart on later this week. Uh, so make sure you go out of your way to listen to that episode as we will. Um, so gracious that he was able to, uh, to let us go first. Let us have the first cracks yeah. at John per se. On the we're, very, we're very grateful to Rob for that. What? Let me ask you. Oh, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no you no, go no, ahead. You, okay. Uh, so gentle. <laughs> well, we're gonna fight. Nick and I are gonna. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, John, what is your five-year plan? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Uh, five years from now, um, probably driving some beat-up old car down some dusty old highway, heading to some town in the middle of God knows where. You know, that's the dream. Just, you know, want to be making a living doing nothing but this. That's the dream at the end of the day. Okay. Doesn't matter how we get there. Doesn't matter what, what, con well, I'm not going to be a fool and sign any old contract, but put before me, but doesn't matter if it's signing a contract somewhere, if it's, you know, maybe, maybe I find a secondary revenue stream that gets me there or whatever. At the end of the day, five years from now, I want professional wrestling to be my sole source of income. That's that's the goal. Is that going to happen in five years? Maybe, maybe not. But knock on wood, hopefully five years. Sure, sure. As you're getting ready for a match, as you're gearing up, how do you get to that place mentally? You know, when the music hits, you come through the doors, and, you know, you're you're – you're that ass that nobody wants to see. You're that ass. It's like, oh, no. And I mean this in a great way. I mean this in a great way. Oh, no, he's here again. How do you get to be that person? Uh, well, I close my eyes. I take a nice deep breath. I let it all out. Uh, then I hear my music hit. I step out, and I see all of the disgusting human beings in front of me. And then just my natural instincts take over. You know? I love it. I love it, dude. I love it. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> all it takes. You know, oh, big, man. big SCW shows coming up here in the next. Uh, you got hot, hot, hot in August, um, and of course the anniversary show. Yeah. Yep. In September. Big. Um, turn the big twenty-one. Turn the. We're your SCW, SCW pros going legal, legal to drink. Year. Oh, They're yeah. going legal this year. <laughs> who's uh, who's bringing the first shot of Malort? Not, no. <laughs> not me. Oh, so you're telling me you're not going to take part? You're not going to take part in any of that Malort down at the Iron Spirit no. Pro Show? No, 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 no. Not Malort. Not Malort. Not me. God, no. uh, I have taken one sip of that. Yeah. Uh, no. Never again. I've heard stories. I'm I, not a drinker, but I've heard neither stories. Am I, neither am I, but I've heard stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, ugh, yeah. I will never, ever, ever let that drink pass through my lips willingly again. Um, and that's all I got to say on that. <laughs> We're talking here with John Bonhart on the Card Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. 
We're powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by German Modeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zook of Country Financial. Uh, John, why don't you go ahead and tell the fans where they can find you out there on socials and where they can see you in the, in the, in the up, 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 upcoming weeks. Okay. Um, I probably should have just had my little, uh, my little banner down there. Have, oh, that's okay. That's session. okay. Yeah, I hadn't actually <laughs> thought about that. Uh, so it is at John underscore Bonhart on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Uh, those are really the only two uh, social media platforms I run right now. Uh, as for where you can see me in the near future, um, as I mentioned earlier, July 20th, I will be at the Station Saloon for Iron Spirit Pro. Uh, next up after that, uh, will likely be hot, hot, hot. Um, it'll either be hot, 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 or it'll be THT, which will be on the 23rd. I'm not actually 100 sure when hot, hot, hot is. We have the date. August 16th. August, so 16th. August 16th will be, will be, um, before THT. THT will be the 23rd. Um, and that will be in Ames, Iowa. Uh, hot, hot, hot will be in bluegrass at the bluegrass convention center. Um, and as of right now, that's, that's kind of the month ahead. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'll hop in a car, ride somewhere and maybe get on somewhere, but, uh, those are the only places right now that we've got confirmed for the next month. Striker has corrected us. It's August 10th. Thank you, Striker. Thank August you, Striker. 10th. Thank you, yep. Striker. <laughs> always, hey, uh, always good to have Striker in our, uh, in our, in our comments. You're helping us yep. out. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we, got a, we got a nice little man in the chair over there. Thank you. Good out, Striker. <laughs> So, John, we could sit here. We could talk all night wrestling with you here. I, I have no doubt that we could talk for hours. But I want to I wanna wrap things up. We're, we're getting close to the hour mark. We want, like to respect everybody's time. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or anything you would say to – you're only a couple years in the business. What would you say to someone who is just getting their foot in the door? Um. There's a lot of things that I could say, but I'm going to peel, peel it back a little, little bit to when we were talking earlier about uh, me watching Lucha Libre as a kid. I think that really encapsulates like what it was about that that really encapsulates what makes professional wrestling special. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know what the story was. I didn't know what anybody was saying, but I could hear the emotion. I could hear the investment. I could see on the faces of everybody in the ring that everything meant so much to them. I could see in the faces of every single person in the crowd what this business meant to them. I could see that for at least one night, everybody's focus was on professional wrestling. It's what was going on in the building at that moment in, you know, whether that be an in-ring segment, a match, uh, whatever it was, that's what the focus was. So we had a show, all you young wrestlers out there, Focus on the show. Focus on what's going on. Whatever's going on outside in your life, leave it at the door just for a night, you know? Um, and for, for the love of God, bring some emotion. Bring some emotion. Give people something to care about. That's why, that's why we're here. Absolutely. And wow. I, think that's, I think that's why you convey to be such a, a crucial part of the SCW Pro roster. You, you have emotion. And your emotion, I think, pisses people off. And people love that. People <laughs> love that. I mean, thank you. Wrestling a, is a great uniter, in my opinion. It's a big family. All those fans that were there last night are all there for a different reason, but they all left happy after the show, having get to see what they came there for. And I mm -hmm. think that's, you're right. There's, there's so much involved in wrestling. So many people love it. So many different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, when that match starts, everybody's invested and they're there for a different reason. And I think that's what's great about it. That that's Absolutely. what's great. That's what's great about it. And all the wrestlers and the performers, they got a different story, and they're trying to tell you something different and, and show you something different and take you on a ride, take you on a different ride than the match before or the match after. And that's what's special. That's what I love about wrestling. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, we have been talking with John Bonhart, uh, the dark horse the keeper of the cup as the episode is named absolutely uh, this is uh, great we're gonna wrap things up for tonight <laughs> you need to steal that yes you talked about yes. it off the air you need to steal that yes. make it your own <laughs> he is the um, keeper of the cup 
Yes. <laughs> it's got a ring to it, man. It's got such a good ring to it. I, love I wish it. I had thought of it six months ago. <laughs> well, hey, we'll let you have we'll let you have it for free. Consider it a gift. All right. Come up with a t-shirt near you soon. <laughs> well, we are going to wrap things up for tonight here. Uh, just a little preview. You've seen it on socials. We've talked about it on, for the last couple of weeks. This Thursday at 7.30, we will be having on Jake Crist, former X Division champion, former Pro Wrestling Revolver champion. Uh, can't wait to talk with him. Uh, Nick, should I reveal what's coming up the next two weeks, or do you want to hold on to that? You go ahead. All right. Uh, rip really band, excited rip the about it. Off. <laughs> we have uh, we have one half of the tag team known as the hype coming on next Sunday. Mr. Hunter Holdcraft will be in the studio, and August first is coming up real fast, Nick. And I don't know if you know the significance of that. You better. I it's do. our birthday. It is our birthday. <laughs> we will be turning two years old. We're going to be celebrating a little bit early. Uh, we've invited some friends onto the podcast for our second panel show, uh, talking about guess what wrestling we're going to preview SummerSlam with zach takis from shotgun wrestling radio tom chilstrom from the two count podcast and of course our good friend timothy regal joining us in studio you're all invited too it's going to be a big party that's two weeks from tonight and of course we'll wrap up uh we'll cover SummerSlam and talk about all the happenings there uh the following week but for my tag team partner never wrong nick bull i am the wizard cz this is card subject to change the podcast for the fan by the fan again as always powered by our great sponsors low pies pizza built by durham remodeling colored by ryan allison tattoo and protected by jared zook of country financial we will see you thursday for an exciting episode with jake christ and we'll see you back here sunday as well at our regular time have a good week everybody